So Dr. Ravi Kumar received his uh, B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from Acharya Nagar University Guntur in 2008. Further, he received his uh, M.E. in CAD CAM from uh, Andhra University Visakhapatnam in 2010. Later, he obtained his uh, Ph.D. degree in uh, Robotics in School of Mechanical Sciences from uh, IIT Bhubaneswar in 2019. He has seven years teaching and research experience. At present, he is working as assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering of Maulana Azad National Institute of Technology, Bhopal. His research area includes uh, legged robotics, motion planning, agricultural robots, manufacturing, and soft computing. At present, he is holding one BST project as a principal investigator with worth of 23 lakhs and one ISRO project as a co-investigator with a worth of uh, 8.6 lakhs. He has published about 42 technical papers in various national, international journals, book chapters, and conferences. He is an active reviewer of various international journals. Now I request uh, uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar Garu to uh, start his speech. Thank you, sir. Yeah, very good morning. First of all, I want to take my slides are moving or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are. Okay. Uh, thank you for Jekiran Reddy for nice introduction about me. Uh, today, I'm going to discuss about one of the advanced topic. Uh, how all industries, they are looking for, for automation applications. And at the same time, and there are few applications in agriculture also. The topic is that mission vision or robotic vision in automation. First of all, I'm going to give a clarity about people will call it as there is a different one is the mission vision and second one is the computer vision. And sometimes people may call it as robotic vision also. There are different names they're calling, but the meaning is same. Maybe computer vision or it may be uh, mission vision or it may be robotic vision. Then coming to see what is this robotic vision. See, when you come to robotic vision, you just see it is similar to human vision. See, as a human being, we have our own eyes. We are trying to capture image from our surroundings. And based on the image, whatever we have captured by using our eyes, by using our eyes, whatever we are going to capture. And we are sending to our brain. Brain is a processor. It is doing processing and it is sending the information to whatever you want to do. Okay, it may be your hand you want to operate or it may you want to operate your leg, that depends upon you. The brain will send the, the output. Similarly, the robot is also required, there is a vision. Then what it will do, hence the robot, it consists of a vision, robot will also do the similar type of things, how human is behaving like that robot will also behave. See, it provides valuable information that the robot can use to interact with the world around it. See, when you provide this type of vision system to robot also, what robot will do, it give our valuable information and it can interact with the surroundings. It can interact with the surrounding. And when you are going to equip with the vision system to the robot, you can see Robot also can identify the different colors and it can identify the parts how human being is doing. And similarly, it can detect the people also. And it can check the quality, the whether the component is quality or not. And the process information, what type of process you are doing, the type of process information. It, it, the robot can gather these all the information, parts, that detect the people and check quality process from its surroundings and it can also read the text okay whatever the read text you are giving like a b c you are writing the robot can read this is the letter a b c see these type of tasks if you are going to provide the vision system robot can do these all the activities then coming to what is a uh, robotic vision we have seen then coming to robotic vision see what generally it will do robotic vision when you come to robotic vision it is the one of the process of acquiring acquiring 
and extracting information from the images of 3D world. That means what it will do, the robotic vision, it will try to acquire the information or extracting the information from the image. Image in the sense, whatever the surroundings are there, first it will take the why because when you are going to see the surroundings, it is a 3D or it may be 2D image. Okay. You can provide 3D image or you can provide 2D image also. That depends upon. See what it will do generally when you are going to take the robotic vision, the primarily targeted to manipulation. That means it is going to do some task and interpretation of image, whatever the image you are going to provide based on the image, it is going to provide the manipulation means the robot is going to move, it is going to do some particular tasks and also whatever the information we are providing based on that you are going to control your robot. When you come to robotic vision or mission vision, you can see what it will do the sensing of vision data and its interpretation by computer. See how we are going to, how the robot can understand if suppose if you are providing any image, any 2D image or 3D image, you are providing to the image, how robot can understand. Robot can art understand directly the image. What we need to do, the image we are going to send to the computer, then computer will do some processing, then it will give the information to the robot controllers. See, when you're going to see what are the vision system, it consists of what are the things are there. A camera will be there when we are going to do robotic vision. When people will call it as, I'm going to apply a vision system for robot or I'm going to develop a vision system for robot. First, we need one camera is required and we need one digitizing hardware is required and a digital computer is required. And hardware and software, what type of algorithms we are going to process your data and what type of programmical uh, program PLC, program logic controller you require. These are all the things we need to utilize it. See, when you are going to interface this hardware and software, that we are going to refer to as a preprocessor. Preprocessor means, see, what will happen, whatever the data we are going to getting, that data, we need to preprocess it. Why? Because sometimes maybe what will happen, whatever the image you are going to take it, the image consists of there is some noise or it may be, it may lose some information. That information we try to pre-process it. When you come to see the robotic arm, see here I have shown there are different types of robotic arms. One is the industrial robotic arm. You can see here what it is doing this industrial robotic arm. See, we have assigned there is a vision system here what this robotic arm is doing by using this vision system, it is just identifying the parts. What are the parts are there? And then it will take the image only. That it may be 2D or 3D. It can take the image. This image, it will send to the computer. Then computer will process it. Then it will send the signal to robotic arm. Then your gripper can hold it. Which part it is going to cap by making from one place to another place. Similarly, this is the another type of robot. First one is the industrial robot and this is the one of the collaborative robot. Collaborative robot means I think the day before yesterday I have discussed it. Human can interact with the robot. Why? Because in this collaborative robot, it consists of sensors. It consists of sensor, different types of where the joints are there. There is a sensor and it can identify it. when the human can touch immediately, it can try to stop. In this robot also, they are going to arrange the camera and that depends upon which camera you are. It may be if you are going to see the 3D world, you can go for Kinect sensor and if you are going to 3D, uh, 2D, you can go for any CCD cameras, you can utilize it. And coming to, this is the one more, the application now industry they are using, the mobile robot. See why? Because most of the mobile robots we are going to send different places but we, we are not possible to go there. But the problem is that when the robot went different places and how we are extracting the information from how the environment is there. And we are going to attach there a camera for this robot. Then what will happen? Robot will go there and it will capture the data. That means whatever the image, it will capture the image, the surrounding environments, it will capture it. Then that image it will send to 
you are or otherwise it will stored in the memory when it will come back to the robot we will take the image and we will process it and we will do the processing techniques and we will try to extract the information from the image similarly now you can see the space the the people they are sending the robots to space and they want to identify what type of environment are there, there and what type of the things are available and how they are doing they are sending like this type of robots they are sending there and the robot can go there and it will capture the image and it will send to the your space stations and based on that the people the nasa and all the things people they can understand the environment behavior how the environment whether it is look like earth or it may be different environment why because we need here if you, if you are going to send any human being we need again the problem is that we need to provide oxygen and we need to provide the food and all but robot if you send the robot only you need to provide the energy that battery operated or you need to supply it and these are the different types of applications they are using and when you come to classification of the this robotic vision system when you come to the classification you can see the first one is the based on the dimensional model based on the dimensional model whether you are going to use the two dimensional model image or whether you are going to use the three dimensional see in two dimensional model we can see only two dimensions like it may be it is x y x or it may be y z or it may be z x that means we can see any two dimensions like length width or it may be breadth width or it may be height we can see any two dimensions when you come to three dimensions we can see depth also we can see depth. not only length and width we can see the depth also depth or height also we can see see what type of dimension model you are using that depends we need to see see when you come to the two dimensional model see the two dimensional model it operates a binary image binary image means it consists of maybe the gray and white that means the black sorry black and white black and white black and white image binary image means black and white image black and white image means it consists of the binary number it may be 0 or it may be 1 the image it consists of it may be 0 or it may be 1 that depends upon you whether you are going to consider as a black is a 0 or it may be white is a you are going to consider as 1 or it may be white you are going to consider as a 0 that depends upon your background See, it operates a binary image from simple threshold technique. What type of threshold technique you are going to use? I'm going to discuss uh, later. Uh, assume to high contrast between the object and the background by using the control lightning system. See, what will happen when you are going to take any image, we need to provide this high contrast the, between the object and background. Then only we can easily identify which one is the object, which one is the background. I already told you here, generally what will happen when you are going to deal with the this image processing system. Generally, the basic principle we are going to follow is image processing, how we are going to do normal image processing analysis. Normal image processing analysis, we are going to use the 0 to 1 value. See, generally what will happen, where 1 is there, we are going to consider as the object. And where 0 is there, that is called our background. We are going to consider as a background. Then come to the another one is three dimensional model. Here, what will happen when you are going to the two dimensional model? We don't require the sophisticated image and we need only the binary image. But when you come here, here the sophisticated image processing algorithms require the same binary image. Why? Because we need to process it. We need to identify what type of image is coming. Why? Because we need three dimensions required along with length, width, and we need depth also. And here, what will happen when we are going to, when we are going to analyze the image, we are going to use the two cameras. Why? Because we need two dimensions. We are taking from one camera and we are going to take another camera, another two dimensions. That means if you are going to consider X, Y and again Y, Z, we are going to calculate another two cameras. We are going to use to try to capture the image. When you come to the the light intensity level the second classification first classification is the based upon the dimensional model the second classification we are going to use the light intensity level what type of light you are going to provide 
suppose when you are going to take the binary image the gray level values okay the gray level values we are going to divide into there are two categories one is black and white i already discussed why because the depends upon light intensity level value only we can understand the how much the image quality is there and the other system we are going to use the classification of each pixel gray level into various level of the range one we are going to converting as a black and white second one we are going to converting as a the gray level different change different ranges of the gray levels then only we can classify the your image then you can see here the components of the vision system when you come to the components of the vision system you can see here when you are going to use when you are going to try to take any image first we need to concentrate about the lightening that means illumination okay illumination and sources generally we call it as illumination why because the lightening is required otherwise if there is no lightening we cannot capture the image we cannot capture the image then come to camera generally most of the applications we are going to use the ccd camera charge coupled device camera we are going to use what this camera will do based on the light intensity value the camera will take the capture the image that image we are going whatever the image we are going to take it that initially it's look like it is not a complete image the final image it's unlock to digital conversion whatever the image we are taking that is initially it is a unlock signal and we are going to use the why because why we are converting unlock to digital because computer cannot understand whatever the unlock signal we are sending then we need to convert it as a digital unlock to digital converter we are going to use this unlock signal we are converting as a digital convert digital then we are going to store these digital values into a frame grabber the frame grabber it is a storing only the digital values it is storing the data it is storing then we are going to send that values whatever the digital values we are going to send to the computer and here computer will do the processing how you will do different types of algorithm the computer can use to process it and the computer have memory also it will store the whatever the image is coming it can store and it can there is a the monitor and keyboard we are going to see what type of image coming in the computer and it can send to the input of the robot controller then what will happen when we are going to see the computer image then it will come to a, the complete information we are getting we can see the image what type of image we have captured we can see in the monitor also then based on this image the computer will give the signal to the the robot controller then robot controller will do and it will send the signal to the robot joints it will send the signal to the robot joints then according to this controller operation the robot joints can move it can complete the task it can complete the task whatever the task we are going to provide it may be you are going to part identification or it may be you are going to see the quality that means inspection you are going to do or you are going to part counting or maybe you are going to measure the distance or you are going to do identify the color that depends upon application the process is same any robotic vision this process is same the process is same and that depends upon application what type of image you are going to provide that depends upon application your robot can control your robot joints then it can do the the particular task and when you come to see how it is doing this mission vision robotic system you can see here clearly in the a pictorial representation you can see see this is your illumination model that means in the light intensity there are two cameras they have kept here so there are sorry there are two lightening techniques they have provided here why because we need more clarity of the image that means we are going to improve the lightening techniques and there is a camera here the camera is going to capture the image and after capturing and it is transferring a lot to digital conversion then it is going to frame grabber then it is going to your real time image processing here it will do processing why it is do processing means we may be sometimes what will happen when you are going to take the image there is a noise will be there we are going to try try to reduce the noise by using this processing 
when you are going to processing we are going to use there are different types of algorithms we need to use how the processing of the image then we are going to we can see parallelly in the monitor also and we can send the signal to your plc and here it can give the signal to the your robot you can just consider this is your robot whether you want to reject the suppose there is a parts are coming on the conveyor belt you can see the parts are coming from here to here the conveyor belt this light and base this camera can take the image whether this part is any defect is there or with no defect if it is defect is there immediately it will send information to the your controller then what will happen immediately it will reject whatever the part it is defected it will be rejected according to the the image information this is the way it is working and when we are going to the image how we are going to the step by step process uh, we can see first what we'll do we'll capture the image from the environment by using your ccd camera this is the one of the step we are going to follow is the second one is what we are going to do we are going to calculate the light intensity how much light intensity is measured along in the particular direction why because when you are going to capture any image the light intensity is required it is much more important when the why use using suppose you can see here this is one image one image we have captured from the uh, the camera this is the image y direction and this is the image the coordinate is x direction that means this is 2d image not 2d this is 3d not 3d image this is 2d image here you can see one is positive y axis another one is the positive x axis and in the positive x axis y axis i am considering as m and in negative uh, sorry positive x axis i am going to consider as n and see this is the image the whatever the black it is the, this is the complete you can see this is the one image and this is the complete image and you can see here the complete image i am going to divide into number of pixels the number of pixels see you can see the number of pixels that depends upon you how many pixels you want to divide you can divide 512 or you can divide 512 you can divide 256 and you can 128 64 and 32 that depends upon requirement we can divide it maybe 512 100 fold or maybe you can divide 256 or we can divide 128 or 64 or see after dividing after dividing then you will get number of pixels this is one pixel this is another pixel this is another like this this is one pixel whatever this this is pixel the pixel it consists of there is image the pixel we will call it as a it may be image element or picture element or it may be pixel or it may be pel we cannot call it as a another name we call it as a pel also see how we are going to work by using see see there is a electron beam scanner why because this electron beam scanner it is scanning your image see how it will scan see this is your electron beam scanner it's look like uh, your electronics beam scanner and here see there are number of pixels and e pixel here there is a photosites how this photo size will be there that depends upon the light intensity level see where the light intensity is more and it may be the photo size is more size and where the less is there it may be the photo size less charging it may be more charging or it may be less charging that depends upon the light intensity level when you come to see how we are going to calculate the what is the pixel value how we are going to calculate the, the pixel value how we are going to calculate and where your image is there exactly see when you are going to uh, convert this analog signal to digital see i have already told you this is the positive y axis and this is the positive x axis and see suppose if i am going to calculate the the intensity level sorry light intensity level okay before going that means before going to pixel value we are going to calculate the light intensity level how we are going to calculate suppose i am going to calculate the positive y axis direction suppose i am going to calculate this pixel light intensity value the i am this positive value we are going to calculate on this direction see suppose if i am going to consider when you plot see when you plot here suppose this is the this pixel oh 
and you can see here the y axis uh, the uh, the x axis i am considering as a y that means this y and the, uh, here you just i am considering as a light intensity that means we are going to calculate the light intensity value in y direction see suppose in the particular this pixel the light intensity value is so much this is the value how much it is there it may be maybe 30 or 40 50 or 100 what that depends upon the light intensity value the particular pixel similarly we are going to calculate in the x direction also similarly i can take here this is x and this is the light intensity value this is the light intensity value in x uh, lx and you can and suppose if i am going to calculate for particular pixel and this is the light intensity value that means based on this light intensity how we are going to calculate this light intensity by using this photo sites by using this photo sites why because wherever the light intensity value is more than the photo sites the charge electrical charge may increase and wherever the less it is there the photo sites will not charge that much level then what will happen now we are calculating along with x direction along with y direction we have calculated then we need to calculate the l x square plus l y square then we will get the some numerical value this numerical value it will come to any nearby integer value that integer number we are going to consider as a the light intensity value of the particular pixel the light intensity value of the particular pixel we are going to calculate this is the way we are going to calculate the light intensity value of the particular pixel suppose i need the pixel value suppose the that 32 number flicks this is the th otherwise i need this pixel light intensity level we need to calculate along with the y direction along with the x direction similarly and the light intensity values in the x direction also we need to calculate then see now what will happen first we have taken the image that image then we have calculated the light intensity value by using your photo sites then we are going to frame grabber see whatever the intensity values you are getting suppose this is f0 comma 0 that means this is one pixel that means 0 comma 0 pixel this is another pixel see when you your complete image we have divided into number of pixels like your matrix the best example like your matrix this is one pixel this is second pixel third when you come here these are the pixel values that depends upon this is 0 comma 0 means the starting element 0 comma 0 and we have represented n minus 1 to m minus 1. Then see, whatever the light intensity, we are going to calculate the light intensity values for each and every pixel. All these pixel value, uh, light intensity values we are going to store in, each pixel light intensity values we are going to store into the this frame grabber. The frame grabber, it is just like a storing device. It is just like a storing device then now what will happen we have these pixel values that means light intensity values okay and each pixel we have calculated now we want to pre-processing we want to pre-processing your information why because sometimes i already told you the image consists of a noise and it may be some data we may lose how to restore this data and we need to reduce the noise then only you will get the 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 particular correct image we can achieve it then when you come to here the pre-processing we are going to use there are different types of pre-processing methods we are going to use see one of the method people they are using that is masking method how we are going to use by using uh, this masking method how we are going to do the pre-processing pre-processing means only we are going to remove the noise and we are going to restore the information what are the information we may lose why because some images what will happen some information suppose when you go here you can see sometimes what will happen maybe that image there is a, some information is missing here how we are going to restore this information by using this pre-processing techniques and come to this 
masking how we are going to do this masking here see here i have written one equation p x comma y o of f of x comma y this f of x comma y is your light intensity value of the particular pixel this is light intensity value of the your particular pixel you can go back and see f of 0 comma 0 f of 0 comma 1 f of okay that means the particular light intensity value of the particular pixel and o is nothing but your operator this is your operator value and this is your pre processed intensity that means initially what is the value suppose initially here some value is there some 4 it is there just example and some x it is there otherwise some x is there i want to identify the pre processing information what is the after pre processing it may reflect to y or it may reflect to some m or it may reflect to some k okay what is the information we are going to calculate it see how we are going to calculate the light uh, the pre processing technique by using this light intensity value suppose you can take any one image i am going to consider as a there is a 3 by 3 3 by 3 by 3 this 3 by 3 matrix we are going to consider that means the first three rows elements and three columns then you can see here this is f of x1 x minus 1 y minus 1 that means the coordinate of x direction is x minus 1 the coordinate of y direction is y minus 1 similarly next x minus 1 comma y next x minus 1 comma y plus 1 similarly you can see here x comma y minus 1 x comma y x comma y plus 1 and x plus 1 y minus 1 similarly you can see x plus 1 now my intention is that i want to calculate this pixel value that means light intensity value for particular this pixel particular this pixel i want to identify the light intensity value after pre processing after pre processing what is the new value what is the new value how we are going to calculate see here you can see there are elements for this is the center of the element up and down and left and right there are the elements and corners also there are the elements and we need to use some operators we are going to use that is called coefficients okay to calculate this new intensity value we are going to consider as a 3 by 3 the coefficients also we need to consider that 3 by 3 coefficients we are going to write in as w1 w2 w3 to uh, w9 that means w1 to w9 we are going to consider the coefficients coefficients means like your operator here you have seen the operator value if you are taking 3 by 3 matrix you need to take the the 3 by 3 the coefficient matrix now we are going to calculate the new pixel value how we are going to calculate the new pixel value see our target is that p of x comma y p of x comma y we need to calculate this is and o into f of x comma y now you can come to you just calculate you can keep your matrix this w1 whatever the element one whatever the element here this one into whatever the value f of x comma x minus 1 y minus 1 plus w2 the particular w2 the coefficient and particular what is the element value the pixel what is the intensity element means the intensity value x minus 1 y and w3 f into x minus 1 plus comma y plus 1 and up to w9 f of x plus 1 y this is the way we need to calculate then we will get the the new light intensity value of the particular value particular q that means now whatever the value we are going to calculate that p of x comma y is nothing but whatever the after pre-processing that value may change here it may change here then when you come to here you can see here suppose if you want to calculate what is the new value here then you just see you can utilize suppose this is your whatever the mask option minus one minus one minus one see here you can see here the left and right minus one minus one the same value and top and bottom and diagonal also you can see when you sum all these things when you sum all these values it will come minus eight plus eight then it will come zero 
that means your intensity value is zero see when you come to zero zero means whether you are going to consider as a background or it may be object that depends then come to this is the one technique how we are going to do the masking the pre processing second one is the neighborhood averaging here what will happen in the neighborhood averaging in the same way how we have calculated how we have calculated the previous process how we have calculated in the same manner we can calculate and you can see here the p of x comma y is calculated by averaging the intensity values of the pixel contained predefined neighborhood that means suppose there is a 3 by 3 matrix there is a 3 by 3 matrix and what is the value what is the value what is the value what is the value here you can take suppose 3 5 6 Eight, four, one, three, two, four. We are going to, we are going to do the summing, summing of all these values. That means all these element, pixel elements. Three come up. Three plus five plus six plus eight plus nine. Uh, four plus one plus three plus two plus four. Then we are going to do the average. Average means total how many numbers by nine. Then you will get whatever the value you are getting. That value is given your new light intensity after pre-processing the new light intensity value. See when you come to here, you can see here the S. Okay, the S is the the set of pixel where you are going to write, and the neighborhood of x comma y, where R is the total number of neighborhood pixels. What are the total number of values we are going to submit? That is the way we need to calculate. This is the one method, and the next one is the median filtering. The median filtering, how we are going to suppose the values there is a three comma five comma six comma seven, eight nine ten. Suppose that means when you are going to make your three by three cross matrix. The values are coming. Suppose three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, two, one. Okay. See, first you just check it. Uh, first you just check it. What are the values are there here? And we need to write the ascending order. You just write one, two, three, four, five, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you just see whether we are going to use the even number or odd number. Why? Because sometimes what will happen? You may want to calculate this value, this pixel value, this pixel, this pixel value we are going to calculate. Then how we are going to calculate this pixel value? Now we are calculating this pixel value. Sometimes you need to calculate. First, I will tell you how to calculate this pixel value. See when you are written in the ascending order. See how many total numbers are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The total numbers are nine. It is odd number. Then you just divide, you just remove it, the first four and last four. First four and last four, you just divide it, remove it, neglect it. Okay, then you just take whatever the middle value that is. This is called your median. That means the new light intensity value is here five. This is not the earlier value. Something it is there. It is not that one. It is five new light intensity value. Sometimes what will happen? You may want to calculate. You may want to calculate. I am going to divide it like this. I want to calculate this. Then what we'll do? We need to make certain again. But because you need three cross by three, three cross by three required. Then you make like this. Then you extend it. Then you can see. Now, what is the value here? Here, there is no value. There, you just take zero, 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 zero. Okay, then you just count up to here. We are going to take this much. Now you can see one, two, three, four. Only four values are there here. This type of arrangement you can see whether it is even number or odd number. You are going to calculate. 
when you are going to calculate the odd number you just remove the first and last values and keep it middle value when you are going to take the even number you just take the middle of the two numbers average you need to take see when you are going to median filtering you just need to determine the pre processed light intensity value of a pixel q we consider the light intensity values of all neighboring pixels including itself that means including this value when you are going to calculate including this value we need to consider we sort the light intensity value in ascending order and then determine the median value the median value is going to replace the intensity value this is the way we need to replace the new intensity value after pre processing see these are the three methods we are going to use the pre processing and then after pre processing what we are going to do we are going to the step five we need to do thresholding i have already discussed earlier thresholding why this thresholding is required now we are going to identify based on this pixel values that means this is the light intensity value pixel values means each pixel consists of one light intensity value based on this light intensity value we are going to identify the image see how we are going to identify the image i already discussed earlier generally we are going to consider as a the background background we are going to consider as a zero and the whatever the object object we are going to consider as a one that means zero and one zero and one sir see when you are going to calculate zero and one see the matrix whatever the value g of x comma y equal to see one if p of if p of x comma p of x comma y means the light intensity values already we have calculated greater than your threshold greater than your threshold and if p of x comma y less than or equal to your threshold then that whatever the element is there if they see this this element it is a one pix, one pixel value okay light in the p of x comma is the your light intensity that is one pixel value if it is greater than it is one if it is less than it is zero that means whatever the values we have calculated earlier by using this pre processing techniques that pre processing techniques whether the value is coming more than threshold or less than threshold if it is more than threshold if it is one if it is less than threshold if it is zero then one means there is a object then you can see the background and white object one correspond to the object and zero indicates the background now you can see the picture here these all zeros are background these all the zeros are background and that means there is no image here there is no image here in this there is no image the image is here only in this range only where the ones are there this is the image the particular image we have captured this is the way we need to do the thresholding then come to the edge detection see once we have done the the thresholding you need to identify where your image is exactly this edge you need to identify this edge you need to detect it you need to identify the this image and you can see here how we are going to do the edge detection there are two different types of operators we can use one is the gradient operator second one is the laplace operator and first we can see the gradient operator how we are going to identify the edge see the edge the using gradient operator we are going to represent g that is p of x comma y means already you people know p of x comma y means light intensity value of the particular pixel then gx and gy this is the value the gradient operator in x direction and y direction we are going to calculate the gx means we are going to calculate do p by do x that means we are going to differentiate with with the p with respect to x we are going to differentiate with p with respect to y when we are going to differentiate with respect to p with respect to x and p with respect to y then you will get the the new the edge values the gradient operator values how we are going to calculate see by using mask the mask concept we are going to utilize here how we are going to calculate the gradient operator you can see see when you are going to see the gradient operator you can see here the gx how we are going to calculate this gx and gy suppose when you are going to calculate suppose you can take here see you can see here the minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 
and you can see one two one that means we are going to calculate here the x value we are going to calculate here all these horizontal the rows are negative and here all these uh, the bottom is rows are positive that means when you are adding that means when you are going to add the value will come to zero minus one plus one minus two plus two minus when you submit also you just see the value is coming zero similarly gy also we are going to calculate the here we have seen the row here we have seen the column column wise you can see this element and this element this element and this that means when you are going to submit we are going to get the the zero value then come to the laplace operator you can see here the laplace operator you can see uh, generally in simple terms we can uh, we can call it as a the gradient operator we are going to call it as a velocity and this is called we are going to call it as a acceleration that means we have given the displacement p of x comma y and we have calculated the first derivation and second derivative and how we are going to calculate here you can see see this is the mask operator we are we are, we are using the mask operator 0 1 0 1 minus 4 1 0 1 0 that means when you are going to do this the square p by the x square plus the square p by the y square the p is nothing but p of x comma y suppose if you are going to identify this particular region you just see the corner corner elements are always zero and whatever the elements are here it should be always when you go when you uh, submit one plus one plus one plus you will get four four minus four you will get the zero this is the way we need to calculate the edge detection that means based on these values we can identify where the object is there exactly where the object is there. when you come to here you can see the edge uh, how we are going to detect it see this is the complete object you can see this is the complete object and this is your gray color and this is your white color and this is your this is g this is w this is g that means already we have the gray means that means background that means background color and white is nothing but object when you see the light intensity distribution see when you start suppose when you come to the displacement you can see initially it is constant then it is ag see how it is that means the light intensity is slowly it is increasing and it is constant after increasing it is a constant the light intensity is gone then slowly the light that means initially the light intensity from gray to white it is slowly it is increasing light intensity level and after reaching it is constant then it slowly it is decreasing and again it is there is no light intensity that means dark background when you come to see the first derivative velocity is also an acceleration initially the light intensity is increasing and slowly the constant and is decreasing. this is the way we are going to identify the the object whether the object is what type of object whether there is a triangle is there whether it is there is a circle is there or uh, what type of image we can use by using these all these techniques like masking of the pre processing and thresholding and edge detection then when you come to the benefits of the mission vision in manufacturing what is the importance why what is the benefit we will get when you are going to use this mission in the manufacturing applications the first one we are going to eliminates human errors why because as a human being when you are going to see a human eye what will happen sometimes maybe uh, we cannot see the particular whatever the damage or crack is there we cannot identify and we cannot see the how much suppose the products are going on the conveyor belt with the particular speed and we cannot identify how many count also how many products are moving why because it is going some speed and this type of uh, applications what will happen human may get some error human may maybe wrong calculation will be there when you in, when you are going to involve this mission vision without any error it can identify and it can give the quant the accuracy also it can develop the accuracy and the repeatability and speed also and also when you are going to change suppose as a human being maybe i have counted or maybe i have identified the the defect of the parts and you may have identified the defect of the parts maybe different the same part you have there is a defect 
but i have identified some defects and you have identified some defects but some of the defects is not common why because the way of the seeing my eyes is different and the that means the operator to operator we can eliminate that operator to operator difference by using mission vision this is the that means we are trying to eliminate the human error and the second one is the low cost see what will happen when you are going to use this uh, as a human suppose if you want to change something or if you want to count something maybe if you are going to identify any defect of the parts it may take time but when you are going to use the this mission vision system we can in the similar time we can check number of parts then what will happen the number of product will be complete and the cost may decrease and you can see the, the reduced downtime see by removing physical contact between a test system and a manufactured part a vision system safeguard against the part damage what will happen suppose if anything is damaged see what will happen the generally what will happen we are going to use the by using physical contact physical contact means we are taking the part we are touching the part and we are testing whether damage is there or not these are all the time process time taken process while taking the object, the product and go to any microscope or something by as a human eye and we are observing at least 10 minutes what type of defects are there it is a time taken process and when you go for this mission vision process it will reduce the downtime and enhances safety see when you are going to use the human involvement okay what will happen sometimes some of the products whatever we are manufacturing it may not uh, may not uh, it may create some harmful to the human being it may not possible to do by human being that type of things we can use by using mission vision system we can do like some painting we are going to do the painting how there is a lot of chemicals it may harmful to the human being and identifying the print defects suppose if you are going to printed any labeling or something on the any bottling or somewhere see what type of sometimes some letters may be missing you have, you may not observe okay that type of maybe sometimes what will happen the colors the shading of the color which may be changed and the print completely changed that as you generally what will happen as a human being see when you go for purchase any water bottle some of the letters are very small but it is very difficult to read also like you go for our medicines and all the things but which letter is missing and what indication is missing that it is for as a human being we can identify but it will take a time to take the process but when you are going to human uh, mission vision system it can do very fast and take accurate measurements suppose we are going to measure the uh, object dimensions by using human what will happen generally what we will do we will take the scale and we will measure it but and if you go for mission vision system it will take the image and it will calculate what is the diameter and what is the radius how much depth is there these are all the things by using and accurate measurement will get as a human being we cannot get it and detect flaws flaws means see if anything damage okay so anything surface changes suddenly what will happen some of the products the scratches will come after painting there is a crack it is visible or it may be any scratches will be there maybe some places they have painted clearly some places they have not painted clearly that type of flaws also it can identify by using and locate objects and suppose if there are number of products are there number of objects are there and where uh, the similar products by using mission vision system the similar products we are going to make in groups okay these are the different types of benefits we will get why because in industry they are looking why because nowadays what will happen the day by day the labor requirement we are it is going to decrease then the industry is looking for how best we are going to improve how best we are going to provide the quality based on these mission vision system they are looking what they will do these mission vision system they are going to attach the robot then robot can do the particular operation according to the the information is processing by the computer then come to the applications see most of the industries now actually people will talking about one of the buzzword that is artificial intelligence ai how this artificial intelligence they are developing see based on this mission vision only how this are why because 
how the robot can take own decision how the robot can take this own decision robot can take the own decision by using some vision that it maybe you are going to provide the the information you are going to provide by image pro, image format or you are going to provide the some sensors okay then only your robot can behave like a intelligent robot and some of the intelligent algorithms they are using for why because we have seen the pre processing techniques thresholding we have seen that place what people are using some deep learning algorithms also to process this data the machine vision system and what they will do and sometimes what will happen suppose we are going to identify any part you are going to identify any part and we have to make we have to show the robot to initially there are very varieties of parts that means suppose if i am going to uh, uh, there is a nut and bolt there is a nut and bolt i am going to identify that means we need to process the data of we have to take the nut and bolt in different orientations the photos we have taken the image we have taken the different orientations and we need to upload these images into the computer then what will happen due to this machine learning algorithms it will train the complete system may train it then after training what will happen the robot can understand if any orientation if the robot can see the nut and bolt and it can identify okay this is the this size of m32 bolt this is this size of bolt and this is this nut both are need to pair like that robot can understand when you come to see the applications uh, people are using uh, the one is the absence or presence detection that means there is a object is there or not suppose when you are going to work in industry whether the absence of there is any product is coming on the conveyor or not then automated vision testing and measurement they are going to use why because when you are going to in industry they are going to do the measurement measurement the dimension they are going to calculate by using this automated vision and barcode reading suppose we are nowadays we can see all the products we are purchasing there is a barcode that barcode it can read it and it can based on the barcode it can identify the product also and after identifying the product it can pack also depends upon which box we need to pack it and the color verification and you can see the defect detection and optical character recognition and part verification pattern matching and see part verification you can see part verification what type of parts are there pattern whether some of some of the parts have the same pattern or different pattern and sorting if you want to sort there are number of components are there you need to sort it different component the particular category components you need to keep in one basket and traceability suppose if any component is missing where it is there it can be identified trace it and vision guided robots nowadays the people they are working the mobile robots that is the vision guided robots based on the vision system it can the robot can move and these are the some of the goals uh, when you want to achieve this mission vision system suppose if you want to do high quality okay then when you go for mission vision you go for inspection measurement gazing and assembly verification and if you want to increase the productivity the repetitive tasks formerly done by manually the whatever the manually we are going to do that we are going to replace with them suppose if you want to increase the productivity if you want to go for high quality we need to by mission vision we need to do inspection by need to by using mission vision we need to measure by gazing you need to do and assembly that means if you want to reach this goal okay these are all the goals and you need to use the mission vision in the particular task like low production cost like you can see scrap rate reduction suppose if you want to reduce your scrap then you need to go for your inspection measurement and gazing and if you want inventory control and if you want to reduce the floor space see if you want to reach these goals suppose in any manufacturing industry to reach these goals they need to follow mission vision system in particular category then not only manufacturing application this mission vision and they may, you may can utilize in agriculture application also i have shown here the few of uh, agriculture applications and is the livestock farming see up to now we have seen we have discussed about the manufacturing of like how we are going to identify the part how to read the barcode color identification defects identification part verification pattern matching and when you come to here agriculture application livestock farm see what will happen your animals like your uh, cows and dogs or maybe hens you are going to keep in some farmland and you no need to go there and daily you need no need to check it where is your uh, this number of cows how many number of cows are there what is the particular number of 10 number of cows suppose the number 20 cow where it is there 
and what is the health conditions and how it is moving okay sometimes what will happen some people maybe they will provide harm to create that type of things also you need to identify by using this live stock form how we are going to identify we need to use some camera system or otherwise you need to use some any robotic system it may be mobile robot you need to provide or it may be you need to provide any drone type of thing then what will happen it will go there and it will take the image and you no need to go directly in daily to there and based on the image the image will send to your computer then you need to sit and you need to process that data or what is the health condition and all that and you need to use some different types of algorithm to process and all the things then coming to the crop monitoring see the people they are cultivating now in india they have not started still but you can go for the abroad countries the people they are using the crop monitoring that means what is the situation what is the age of your plant and when it is going to come to yield and if is there any diseases are there these all the things crop monitoring means are and what is the the water content of the soil these are all the things we are going to capture by using this crop monitoring system and you can go to autonomous harvesting and yield forecasting that means what will happen the robot can go to the the particular plant and it can identify whether it is ready to harvest or uh, how many days it will take and it will also calculate yield okay what is the the size of the yield it can also calculate and come to you can see the garden uh, grading and sorting sometimes what will happen there are number of fruits and number of vegetables are there you have to grade it you have to grade it how to grade generally what will happen when you go for the fruit or vegetable industry the as a human being they are uh, grading and sorting but it is very difficult task and we cannot identify sometimes it may mismatch also then you can go for this machine vision system it can do accurate grading and pino typing in farming pino typing means what will happen sometimes what will happen you are going to do some particular wheat you are going to farming or it may be rice you are a paddy you are going to farming okay or corn you are going to farming where whether this land is suitable for wheat whether this land suitable for paddy or whether this land suitable for corn and first it will identify the the land and what is the fertility conditions of the land and by using image processing technique and sustainable pest management system when you come to sustainable pest management system means nowadays you can see as per statistical analysis there is a 40% of the whatever the agriculture the people they are losing because of these pest only the agriculture their agriculture field the people they are losing it may be vegetables or fruits or it may be any paddy or wheat the 40% out of 100% 40% they are losing by using this pest only what will happen you just send your drone or you can send your any mobile robot the robot will go there and it will try to identify where the small small bugs are there see how it is. what will happen these bugs what will happen it is a very small size it may stay in the leaf on the top of the leaf it will try to eat the leaf okay and by using this try to eat the leaf and it will survive these bugs will be survive but what will happen the plant may go to sick position because what will happen the plant it cannot take it cannot generate its own food why right? because when complete leaf will be there you can by using photosynthesis it can generate the food and coming to the species detection but sometimes what will happen some of the small species okay it may be uh, stay there on the your uh, plant and it may be damage to it may be it may be create to damage of the your plant and this is the uh, one of the uh, problem see these are the different applications uh, people they are using not only in uh, mechanical applications but manufacturing applications you can go for in agriculture application and the the one more application people they are using like a defense applications also you can go for a defense application how where the the opposite people are there and you can go for one of the application medical applications also the people they are going to take the uh, the operations how we are going to do what the first they will take the image and it can post the data and where we need to do the operation and surgery and all that. there are different applications if you want you can continue by using this image processing 
the the process how we are going to do this is the step by step process i have discussed in the today session i think you may have understand uh, i am going to conclude this session uh, now if anyone have any doubt you can ask now Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, presentation. In, uh, in fact, uh, one year back, one of uh, a student also did one project on this, and uh, you have given much, much, much knowledge on this. Uh, they have did very minor job, and now I understood yeah. what exactly they should do. Thank you very much uh, for this, sir. Actually, yeah. at present, uh, we are working on this fruit identification. We are working on the fruit identification. Yes. Yeah, we also tried the same. We tried to use this the same technology for identifying the tomatoes in the field uh, oh, good, good, based good. on the color of it. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Uh, any questions from the participants? <clears throat> Sir, good afternoon. Yeah, please. So this is uh, Dr. Arun. So I have a small query, sir. If it is a green apple, how to identify that? Ah. Since uh, leaf Hello, and please, leaf, your voice. Sir, is it audible, sir? Sir, is it audible? Sir, I'm audible. Please. Ha, ah, please, please. Ha, ah. please repeat sir, once again. I think I lost my connection again. I joined. Please. Yes, sir. So if it is a green apple, how to identify the green apple in the tree, sir? Ha, Since here. both the uh, hmm. leaf and the uh, apple will be in the same color. Yeah, that's that's why I discussed earlier. We need to first what will happen when we are going to do the this uh, image processing technique for the robot. When you are going to try the robot, what will happen first? We need to take the green apples. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, Hello. sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. First, what we need to do, we need to collect the information first. What we need to do, we just take the different types of apples, different types of sizes. And at the same time, we need to take the leaf also. Okay. First, we need to understand, we need to understand which one is the leaf and which one is the apple. Are you clear, Anna? Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. Then, then also, we need to differentiate which one is the apple and which one. Then we need to say the green apple is also, it is a green color, but there are different sizes, different stages also. It looks like a green, but different stages. But after certain stage, it will come to slowly the red color. Okay. The different yes, stages also we need to teach. Fine, sir. Fine. fine. Uh, first, what we need to do, we need to take the image of the green apple, the particular what type of image you require, you need to process the data. That data we need to store in your memory. And that's why I told you different types of orientation, we need to take the capture the image, we need to capture the image. And the number of images required, when your robot want to work, the number of images required. Suppose the robot is going and just it is uh, farmland, it is taking the pictures that after taking the pictures, we need to do which one is the ready to plug and which one is not ready to plug. That depends on. Suppose how the robot can take the decision. Robot can take the decision, but you need to process, we need to teach it by using machine learning algorithm. For machine learning algorithm, what we require, we need number of data set required. The number of data set means we need to take the green apple, maybe thousand type of images. That means thousand, same, not same image in different orientations. Yes, sir. Yes, you got sir. it. Or not? This is the way we are doing. So, and also, uh, it have uh, it has uh, different cluster also, no, sir. In re. Huh? Ah, yeah, yeah. Different cluster also. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, it seems uh, no other questions, sir. Uh, I should appreciate you for uh, uh, giving such a wonderful uh, presentation on the machine vision. You have started from the very basics and you have uh, covered almost uh, the applications of it. 
thank you very much for this sir ravi kumar sir thank, thank you very much thank for you, this thank you thank you thank you yeah